Thank you everyone for tuning in to our YouTube channel. My name is Jerry and I am the co-ed Sunday school teacher at Grace Church. Now we're currently in a seven week study on big questions about pain and suffering. And we're actually nearing the end of this study we're in. Today we're looking at session six of seven. And in today's lesson of session six, our question that we're going to dive into is, where does comfort come from? Now, if you would like to follow along with us, our scripture is going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And we're going to be looking at verses 3 through 11. Now, it is our prayer for you to be drawn closer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through these lesson studies that we're in. So let's dig deeper into God's word and see what he would teach us today about where our comfort comes from. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Co-Ed Sunday School class here at Grace Church. So glad to have each one of you with us today. I hope the Lord has you have felt the Lord's presence throughout this week. The Lord continues to bless each one of you, and thank you to each one that joins us on social media today. Good morning to you as well. But right, as we always do, we get started taking prayer needs and praise reports this morning. Anything on anyone's heart this morning? I think you need to pray for my sister. Pray for Annette Holder. Don't so go nuts this morning. She's what is going on this been hurting in her, her leg. Bear with me. No, it's going to go. I put, I put fresh lead in this morning. And then hold her. Is she hurting or something? She, remember she said she was hurting. Remember she takes, I takes her the other day and check it on her. So she was hurting her, her knee or something, I think. It'll be page 138 in the first one for God. So just remember that holder. Our pains and sufferings that she's feeling this morning. Jo uh, Jackie. Uh, let's pray for Jackie Miller. Have you heard? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> dose. Yes. <laughs> Jackie Miller having twins. I was actually the Lord for I was that. shocked. We pray for her <laughs> pregnancy because she said that the Lord's will be done in this pregnancy and that she carry full term. I, she, she even says they normally don't carry twins full term, but as far as full term will go. Let's pray for a good pregnancy and everything between them. Yeah, wish them all Plus the best. She's been battling the flu symptoms or the flu, so we pray for that as well. Hmm. And pray for uh, Josh. He's um, him and his family's at Victory Baptist Church this morning. Uh, he's going to be uh, pastoring there for at least six weeks. I did Could be a chance, uh, possibly longer. Uh, but do uh, just pray that God's will be done uh, here with Josh, and we thank the Lord for opening up these. Doors of opportunity for Brother Josh to serve. Your dad, remember? My daddy fell yesterday outside working with me, so let's pray for my daddy. Luckily, he went down easy. We was both looking up in the tree, was cutting trees down, and we was just getting started. I had my hands full with chainsaw and gas, and I was setting that down, and he was walking to look across the driveway to see where we're going to put the rope to have pull the tree the direction we want it goes. We got just a little small window of opportunity where we want to lay for all the trees at. But the rain had washed a gully out in the driveway that he's about this deep. And he was walking, looking up, and I was looking up with him. And I was like, he said, whoa, 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 whoa. Went down. So, but all, thank God all that hurt on him, his, his shoulders stowed up with him a little bit. And immediately it started hurting his left shoulder. He worked him too hard, and he was wore out. Now, now he worked me too hard, bro. <laughs> and it cracks, cracks the no, you know, I always kid him about that, you know. He's good. I love my dad. I thank God for him. I'm glad, grateful he didn't get hurt worse than he did. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Remember Brother Edge? Is he battling his sicknesses with his blood pressure issues? Let's keep him in our prayers. Continue to keep my grandpa in the prayers. It's up and down week again. All right. Remember Brother Ed? Uh, just remember those that... Uh, was affected with this storm last week now, the storm victims. And, uh, I mean, we saw there, Hillbrook got tore up worse than I even thought, man. I mean, we saw the footage. I also remember the family that lost their daughter and murdered this week that's down in Casey. Old, yeah. that's, it, that's down by Columbia, right? Case yeah. is a case. Casey. Casey. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Casey. 
Casey South Carolina. It's so horrible, horrible. Can't imagine what they're going through. Just pray the Lord can use this opportunity to draw them closer to him instead of rebelling against him. Any other prayer needs or any praise reports? Let's keep our church uh, and church family in our prayers. That God will use Grace Church, church and, and use us as his vessels they can pour itself into that we can be used here in our own community. Let's pray that we are drawn closer to the Lord uh, and that we also grow in numbers here at Grace Church. Any other prayer needs for you? Open in prayer. Mm -hmm. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> Our Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to say we love you, Lord. We thank you for loving us. We thank you, Lord, for the many wonderful blessings you bestow upon us. Thank you for the mercy, love, and grace that you that you put toward us, Father. Uh, Father, we just ask you, Lord, today just to, to bless our time of fellowship here at Grace Church, Lord. Lord, I just pray for each one, that even out in social media that's watching this yes. broadcast this morning, Father. Just pray, Lord, you meet their special need, Lord. We, we know that you know each need that is out there, even here within our church. We pray that you minister to each one, Father, according to your will, God. Lord, we do ask you, Lord, to, to help Grace Church, Lord, to grow, to be a lighthouse in this community here in the area of Spartanburg that is located in, that just right outside our four walls, Father, we know that people are lost around us, Lord, dying and going to devil's hell, Father. And we know that by, by the book of Matthew that you commissioned each one of us, Lord, to go into the world, God, and to, and to um, preach the gospel to those around us, Lord. So, Father, we just pray that you give us the encouragement we need today, Lord, as a church family to minister to this community, Lord, that we draw people here to you and that they come to Grace Church and feel your holy presence, Lord, and, and be drawn to you, Lord, and get ministered to here, Lord. May the Holy Spirit have his will, Lord, today throughout our church house, through this service, Lord, today, Father. Lord, we want to lift up Pastor Tommy to you as he brings forth the message this morning. We ask you, Lord, to just deal with his heart, Lord. Just, just let him preach Jesus and Jesus alone, Lord. May the message that you give to Pastor Tommy, today, Lord, just enlighten us. Uh, give us uh, the discernment, Lord, to apply the message that you've given to Tommy to our lives, that we can be the Christians that you called us to be, to be used by you, Father. Uh, Lord, we do want to ask you, Lord, to be with each one that should be here at your house today that can't make it for whatever reason, Father. We just pray you be, to, be with each one in their hearts. Draw them to you. If it's a sickness, Lord, pray for healing for them. If it's sin, sickness, Father, the reason is keeping them here. Pray, Lord, you touch and minister to the heart with that. And Lord, we just, again, we just want to thank you for Brother Josh. We know he's not with us today and his family. Just pray you watch over him. Be with him today, Lord, at Victory Baptist Church. And just bless that uh, time of fellowship and worship, Lord, today. Uh, be with Brother Josh with the message you give him today, Lord. Let him just stand behind Jesus, Lord. And may hearts and lives be changed, even at Victory this morning. Thank you so much for the Miller family, the blessing they are to my family and myself, as well as our church family here at Grace Church, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the Millers, and just watch over them. Father, we do want to lift up Evan Edge to you this morning, as he's uh, missed church here a lot here lately, Lord. You know the reason, God. Today's got a head cold. Just pray you minister to him. I meet this special need he's got, Father. Lord, we want to lift up Ed Litzrock to you, and just ask you to continue to be with him with his uh, sicknesses that he is afflicted with, Lord. We ask for healing. Pray for the uh, Miller family, his family. Just pray you watch over him, uh, them as well, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for allowing Chris to even be one of his caregivers, Lord, his grandson here with us today, God, uh, here at church. Just thank you, Lord, for Brother Chris and the, the ministry that you've placed in his heart, Lord, the love he has for you and the change that you have done in Chris's life, Lord, from when he uh, first came to know you as Lord and Savior and then started joining us here at Grace Church. We're just thankful for Brother Chris. Just pray you uh, be with Chris and meet his special needs as well, God. And Lord, we ask you to be with Annette Holder, Lord, as she has uh, been suffering with uh, affliction with her knee, I believe, and hurting. Just pray, Lord, that you uh, give her healing, Father. I do be with them, Lord, with the loss of their uh, grandbaby, Lord, uh, several months ago. Now, Lord, just pray that you continue to heal their hearts and fill that void in their heart, Lord. And just may your comfort and peace be upon them. Father, we lift up Jackie Miller with her pregnancy. We thank you, Lord, for 
the hope of twins, Father, as we've seen the ultrasound. Just pray that you have your hand upon each one of these children, Lord, that she's carrying now. And Lord, we pray that uh, when they come out into this world, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you just uh, use these children, Lord, as you have uh, Colton, Katie, and Julie as well. But Lord, just put a mark on these children that, that the world knows that these children are yours, God, and they will serve you, Father. Lord, uh, just ask you to be, continue being my dad as he fell yesterday and hurt his shoulder. Uh, just pray for healing for him, Lord. And Father, the storm victims, as they're still cleaning up from this devastating tornado that went through Spartanburg, all the way from the west side to the east side, Father. Just pray, Lord, for each victim, Lord, and pray that you meet their needs, God, and just draw their hearts to you and just uh, give them the hope and encouragement and peace, Father, that they are facing with damages to their homes and cars and property. Thank you, Lord. I don't believe that any lives were, were taken. I'm grateful for that, Father. But just minister to your families according uh, to your will. And Lord, for the family that lost their child in Casey, South Carolina, God, our hearts and prayers go out to them. Just pray that you minister to the hearts of these parents and family, Lord, that lost their daughter to some senseless murder, Father. The details are still coming in about that, Lord. Just comfort this family as only you can. Father, as we look into our lesson today, God, we want to thank you for our lesson that you've given to us. And Lord, we just want to thank you for the comfort that you've given to each one of us, Lord, that when we go through our pains and suffering, Lord, to know that you're there. And Lord, just open our eyes to ways that we can serve and comfort others this week the way that you have comforted us. Again, we love you. Bless our time together today. Of course, and, and, and um, use us according to your will, Father. For in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Again, we, we began on page 138. And just a little recap. Well, we are uh, currently still in a seven-week uh, lesson, and it's big questions about pain and suffering. And today, we're nearing the end. We're in session six. Again, there's seven of them. And the question today we're going to be looking at is, where does comfort come from? Where does comfort come from? And we're in... 2 Corinthians will be our scripture, uh, verses, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. Just a quick recap what we went through. Session 1 was, the question we looked at was, why does suffering exist? Well, we saw through God's word that suffering was not a part of God's perfect plan for us. But we saw that suffering and pains and death and all this came because sin entered into the world, and therefore, so did pains and sufferings. Second week, we looked at how can God use me when others suffer? Well, we saw through our lesson that God calls each of us to stand up for those who don't have a voice, such as the unborn, and also those who can't stand for themselves, like the aged and the disabled. And we are to be a voice for them and support them. In our third week, we looked at, well, why am I suffering? Well, most people assume they're suffering because of some sin or failing in their life. So, similar to uh, karma. You get what you deserve type thing. Put your hand on a stove and it's hot, you're going to get burned. Karma, right? Well, we saw that God may be refining and shaping us by that very challenge or struggle in order to prepare us for something that he wants to do through us in the future. That may be why we're uh, suffering as we do. It's not always because of sin. Sometimes it is sin, but sometimes it is just to glorify God through our suffering. Then our fourth week, we looked at, well, what is God's answer to suffering? And we saw that God's desire and plan is to carry us through our sufferings and for us to know and trust him even more. Then last week, session five, we looked at the question, does God really understand my suffering? And we saw that, yes, indeed, he does. He really knows. He really understands our suffering because God knew suffering to a degree that we can't even imagine. When his son, Jesus Christ, was rejected, tortured, and crucified on that cross to pay our sin debt for us. And today, again, we're looking at where does uh, comfort come from? You know, many of us, we know firsthand the comfort that we experience when we are aware of God's presence 
while we're going through some pain and suffering and tribulations. Now, one of the ways that God makes his presence known is through other believers. When others walk alongside us during our pain and suffering and they support us and they're praying for us, we sense God's comfort. Now, in turn, God can use our own painful experiences to assure others that God is present in their life and that God cares for them. He loves them and he will comfort them the way he comforts us also. There's a question on page number 138 there in your personal study guide. And it, the question simply asks, what do you find comfort in when you're sick? What brings you comfort when you're sick? Anybody want to share? Mm, I'd say probably uh, being in your warm house in your bed. Uh, That's good. Having chicken noodle soup. Absolutely. Uh, people look out for you, you know, if you need them, like neighbors or friends or something, like, you know, with me and, and when I was sick, Leo and was right. watching out for me. And so others, you're there with you along the side. people around, exactly. Yeah, that's about all I can think of. Right. Well, I and mean, chicken soup is, is one thing. Uh, when I was a child, I loved my mom, I loved my dad, but when I was sick, I really wanted my dad's presence around me. Even though mama's one was caring for me, that was a blessing too. And now that I'm older, when I get sick, I love the blessing that God has given to me as well as have my wife, knowing that she's there with me. If I'm sick, I go to the doctor, don't feel like driving. It's comforting mm -hmm. to know that she's there ministering to me. You know, I'll be laying in the bed with a high fever. She'll come in and bring me a cold rag, put it on my head, and ask me how am I doing. Do you want me to you some soup? Stuff like that. So, yeah, that's comforting. Mm -hmm. and, and as you said, Chris, chicken soup. It's good. You know, a whole lot of people, they have a bowl of chicken soup as soon as a head cold first sets in. Others, they're going to try every over-the-counter medication available. Mm -hmm. Still others are firm believers in their grandmother's home remedies. The reason is because it worked for them. So these people in return, they become evangelists for grandma's home remedy cure-alls. Some home remedies, though, they might seem very unusual. For, for instance... Some people, Chris, have you ever done this? Fill a sock with either onions or chicken fat and then wrap the sock around your neck. Now, we really can't vouch for that, that this will work or not, but I guarantee you one thing. The sight and smell of that sock will certainly alert others that you are sick, you have a cold, because you might not can smell it, but the people around you can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that cold man, I hate going to have Me neither. But every child knows that you know, when you're sick, there's nothing quite like having a parent right next to you. Anyone's presence will help, but when it's a parent, you know, someone who loves and cares for you no matter what, their presence makes all the difference in the world. Well, God is, God is certainly present with us, and we're going to see here in 2 Corinthians that uh, we can... Second Corinthians here, that we can be God's presence and God's comfort to others when they suffer, when he's with us. That's what we're going to look at today in Second Corinthians. I'd like to read to you the scripture here from Second Corinthians, chapter 1, and looking at verses 3 through 11, and this is the Holcomb's Christian Study Bible uh, scripture here we're looking at. So just sit back and listen here to what's going on in our lesson today. Paul wrote here, he said in verse 3 of chapter 1, 2 Corinthians, Praise the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Boy, I love that. God of all comfort. No, that's where our comfort comes from. He comforts us in all our afflictions so that we might be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, so through Christ our comfort also overflows. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Now he uses the word consolation and I'll explain that when we get to it. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is experienced in your endurance of the same sufferings that we suffer. And our hope is firm because we know that as you share in the sufferings, 
so you will share in the comfort. For we don't want you to be unaware, brothers, of our afflictions that took place in Asia. We were completely overwhelmed beyond our strength so that we even despaired of life. Indeed, we personally had a death sentence within ourselves so that we could not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a terrible death. He will deliver us. We have put our hope in him that he will deliver us again. And lastly, he says, while you join in helping us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gift that comes to us through the prayers of many. We see here that there's, we know there's 27 books in the New Testament. And Paul, he wrote 13 of those 27 books. He wrote some 32,407 words. And that's about 23% of the Greek New Testament's 138,020 words. Now by AD 50 to AD 51 here, Paul founded the church in Corinth, and that's who he is speaking to. Now, Corinth is a, is a city, it's a narrow isthmus that, uh, that joined northern Greece, which is Macedonia, to the southern Greece, which is called Achaia. Now, isthmus, that's a, break it down here, it's a narrow strip of land with sea on either side, forming a link between two larger areas of land. Uh, other other words there that could be used for is is an island, which I don't really believe that would be it because the island is completely surrounded with. You got the mainland, eh, but peninsula. Ah, I understand peninsula. So, uh, Corinth is a peninsula. It's joined uh, a northern Greece, which is called uh, Macedonia, and southern Greece, which is Achaia. Now he wrote the Corinthians here at least three or four letters. You say, how can that be? Because there's only a 1st and 2nd Corinthians, right? Well, I looked this up a little bit to try to get a better understanding of what took place here. <clears throat> so what they're saying is at least one to two letters of Paul is not in the Bible. Now, again, I don't mean the Bible is incomplete, but no means it does not mean that at all because that's all we need to get to heaven is the Bible through knowing who God is and what Jesus did and who Jesus is and how we're to live to be in the family of God. But it's just interesting, and I'll chase this rabbit for just a short ways down this trail here. The way we get this is 1 Corinthians 5, uh, verses 9 through 13. Paul's speaking here to the church at Corinth again, and here's what he said. He said, I wrote to you a letter not to associate with sexual immoral people. So you go back and look in 1 Corinthians leading up to 5, and you see no other description of that, so that's lost. Here's what it said. I'm going to explain to you what he, what he said here. He said, now, in verse 10, I did not mean the immoral people of this world or the greedy, the swindlers, or the idolaters. He went on to say, otherwise, you would have to leave this world. In other words, if you don't have to, if you don't, are not to associate with sexually immoral people or idolaters and swindlers and the greedy, you'd have to leave this world to find them people. You've got to be in heaven to be with them people. That's what Paul said. He said, I'm not meaning those people. He said, but now, so here we go. He's picking it up here, but now, because people got misunderstood what he was saying. But now, see, I love how the Bible clarifies things. Yeah, that got missed. It got missed. That letter is not in our Bible. But Paul's coming back to describe what, what, what that was about. He said, but now, now he didn't know this at the time. That letter is not going to be in the Bible. He didn't know that when this was taking place. But that's, that's the power of God. How he ties everything together. Uh, here's what he said. But now I'm writing to you not to associate. Now listen close to class. With anyone who claims to be a believer who is sexually immoral or greedy and idolater ver or verbally abusive, a drunkard or a swindler, do not even eat with such a person. In other words, somebody in church that is sexually immoral, they're not living according to God's rules on living life of a married man and wife. If you are an idolater, if you are verbally abusive, you abuse your family, maybe what you're doing, maybe you go out on Saturday night, you get drunk, and you only abuse your family when you're drunk, and you're only doing that when you're out trying to swindle people out of their money. Don't eat with them people, right? But not just people, it's people in church. It's our brothers and sisters. Now listen to what he said. Paul said in verse 12, For what business is it of mine to judge outsiders? 
In other words, what business is it of mine to judge the outside people, the Gentiles, the non-Christians, right? He said, what business is it of mine to judge the outsiders? So we don't judge, right? He said, but don't you judge those who are inside? In other words, those who are in the family? If I'm out getting drunk on Saturday night and Chris tells me, Brother Jerry, is that really up and becoming of a Christian? Is that how God wants you to go on Saturday night, be a drunkard all night, lay out all night long, and then get yourself up, drink a cup of hot coffee and some water and come to church and teach Sunday school? Is that becoming of a Christian? Of course not. No. Now, I have a choice to make. I can say, I can give Brother Chris a big hug and say, you know what, Brother? Thank you for pointing that out to me. And I repent to God, and guess what, man? That's as if that sin never happened. Or... I say, can you believe Brother Chris and the top man he is and what he does himself? And he going to judge me. Take that attitude and cut him out of my life. Well, that's what he's talking about. For what business is it of mine to judge outsiders? Don't you judge those who are inside? Here it is, but finish up. But God judges outsiders. Guess what? The outsiders, those without Jesus Christ, they're going to hell anyway. They're already judged because they haven't accepted Jesus Christ. Paul went on to say, put away the evil person from among yourself. So someone in church today is immoral. Someone in church is a drunkard, idolater, verbally abusive, a swindler. We are to go to that person and mm -hmm. tell them, bring forth their sin to them. We're not judging them, we're warning them. If I'm sitting here as a kid and I'm writing on the table and my sister says, Jerry, now when you, mom and daddy see that, you're going to get in trouble. I can't <laughs> accuse my sister of something. She's just telling me I'm going to get in trouble if I don't stop. So, but we go to those people and we tell them, by the word of God in a loving way, our brothers and sisters in Christ, hey, this is what God's word has got to say about it. And if that person repents, hey, they're your brother, but if they are our sister, but if they reject what you're saying to them with God's word, we, we're supposed to not even eat with that person. Don't social, socialize with that person. But now let's get back on our actual class here. Okay. So we saw that maybe two... One or two letters now of Paul's to the Corinthian church here. Is, is, it got lost. But Paul wrote um, a second. Let me go and say this. But even though that's lost, he still made several visits back to Corinth. Now, Paul wrote our lesson today in 2 Corinthians about A.D. 56. And I love the words that he began with here. He began with words of comfort. He said, blessed be the Lord, even the Father he said, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. And boy, if that's not comforting there, amen? Amen. <clears throat> Any questions as we dig in? I'm a little long-winded, but I wanted to clarify that since this took me there in my studies. I said, well, I bring it forth, so now you know. But the Bible's still God's infallible word, and every word in it is for our reproof, for our doctrine, that we can be uh, perfect Christians <laughs> for the Lord. Living a life for him. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. well, let us begin. Who wants to read 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4? Y'all don't know if I jump at once. <laughs> you want to read it? I will. Okay. <laughs> Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all tribulation. The class, have you noticed this? Up to this point in our studies, we have all we considered the hows and the whys of pain and suffering. Now, what we really want is relief from that pain and suffering. And Paul, he pointed us to the source of that relief. Y'all pick up on that? The relief is God. He said here in verse 3, the God of all comfort. Now, class, this is not a new concept in Scripture. The Bible continually reveals God to be comforting and compassionate. Take, for instance, Psalms 103, verse 13 says, Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. In other words, pity. They take comfort in them, knowing that, that uh, he's with them. If you fear him, he's your God, he gives you comfort. And probably the most well-known and beloved reference to God's comfort comes from Psalms as well, Psalms 23. Y'all probably know it by heart. It's Psalms 23, verse 4. If I started out, I know y'all know it. Yea, though I walk, come on, 
Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come to me. I know that by heart. Very comforting their words. So how exactly does God comfort us? You know, we typically view comfort as relief from pain, right? There's no more. If you've got a toothache and that tooth gets pulled out and the pain subsides, hey, you're free from that pain. You're comforted because that tooth is out, causing all that pain. But we assume that we'll experience God's comfort when he removes our pain, just like pulling that tooth out, and restores a sense of ease or well-being. But however, now the Greek word for comfort means to come alongside of. It means to come alongside of someone. Now, our English word for comfort, it includes the Latin word, which is fortis. Now, when you look back at the Latin, well, what does fortis refer to? Well, it refers to strength. So we experience comfort then, not because our pain is gone, but because God walks beside us during our pains and suffering. He strengthens and he, and he gives us encouragement. We hope that God will remove the pain. But see, even if, even if, I love that song, there's a song, Mercy Me, I'll throw that out there, even if, wonderful song. Uh, but even if he does not remove that pain, we still can know comfort because God walks alongside us. Second Corinthians, that Paul still wrote here to, to the church of Corinth, uh, chapter 12, verse 7 through 10, says it this way. Paul writes here to him, he said, by the King James Version here, he said, And least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan. Tells us what it is, to buffet me. Least I should be exalted above measure. He said in verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, which means three times he prayed about it, that it, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, Jesus speaking to him here, said, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, listen to this now, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure. There's another word now, but you don't take pleasure. Who takes pleasure in infirmities? But here, as children of Christ, it's what we're supposed to do is take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessity, even when you need, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He said, I'd, I'd rather go through my infirmities. I'd rather be in need. I'd rather be persecuted. I'd rather be distressed for Christ's sake because when I'm suffering for Christ's sake, then uh, God's strength is going to be made perfect in that. So he says, he therefore, he glorifies in his infirmities. All right. So the only solution to our suffering and pain is the Lord Jesus. He's the one who, who as here verse 4, Barbara just read, says he comforteth us in all our tribulations, regardless of what we're going through, regardless of that pain and suffering, physical pain. It could be emotional pain, spiritual pain. doesn't matter what pain you're going through the suffering. Christ is there and he's going to comfort us in all of those tribulations. And there's nothing we can suffer by the way that Jesus has not already experienced. You say, well, has Jesus felt the pain of loneliness? Well, we saw actually just a few weeks ago that yes, indeed he did because Jesus was abandoned and alone on the cross. He, he bore our sins on him and his father could not look down upon him because he was carrying the sins of the whole world. So he was lonely. How about physical pain? Did Jesus endure physical pains? Well, we saw, yes, he endured a scourging uh, in the torture of the cross with all of its sufferings and shame. How about did Jesus feel the pain of rejection? Well, mm -hmm. even today, unbelieving people, even members of his own family turn their backs on Jesus. And now when Paul, when he says in verse four that uh, he comforted us in all our tribulations, well, guess what? Paul, he knew a thing or two about uh, tribulations and, 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 and pains and suffering, right? Because he was not immune to difficulties. And even before he wrote this letter here that we're looking at today, he endured hard times. He wrote he wrote later in a letter in 2 Corinthians 7, verses 5 and 6, Paul said, For when we come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, 
but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. I love this. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. You see how he told you how God comforted him. We see here how God comforted Paul when he was in Macedonia there and was getting afflicted real bad, come upon him there, chastisement and everything that he, that he faced there in Macedonia. He was in fear for his life and everything there. God sent another brother, another Christian to him. God sent Titus. See, God meets our needs. I can tell you a story. It's nothing like this but pain and suffering. But how God meets your needs even through other people. Josh and I were working on a car, Barbara, it's a blazer. And man, we were trying to replace the water pump on that car. Now, Josh is a good mechanic. <laughs> he knows a lot about automotive. But we could not break loose that big nut that was holding the fan blade on. And out of the blue, a brother in Christ, a good friend of mine, he was a neighbor before he got married and moved out. He actually lived right across the road from us. Out of the blue. He, this guy, he's a mechanic for a city here in South Carolina. Uh, he, he works on their cars for the city cars, but either way, this is how God works. Me and Josh were struggling. Do you, is this left-hand threads? Is it right-hand threads? We're gonna, we didn't know which way to go to, to really push or pull whatever to break that nut loose. We were at a wall. We'd be like, we don't want to break it. All of a sudden, come down the driveway, you never guess it. My buddy Barry. Here come Barry. God sent Barry down there that day. Barry said, <laughs> I said, Barry, you know, I take this nut off this fan. He said, yeah, but you ain't going to like the way I do it. Said, what do you mean? I said, I just want it off. He said, all right. He went up there, man. He said, got a hammer? Yep. Got an extension going to the ratchet we was using, the wrench. He took that hammer. He knew exactly which way to hit it. Man, he pounded that, that end of that wrench a few times and nut come loose. <laughs> God, no, we needed to get the car fixed for Barbara to get to work. And we was getting stressed out about it, not knowing. But that's how God works. He has sometimes sin to meet our need. It's not always um, supernatural to get the comfort. He says what we need. He sent Barry to help us do it. We're hearing Paul and his afflictions there in Macedonia to comfort him, sent Titus to him. Boy, we serve a mighty God. Now, Paul's experience with God's comforting presence, it allowed him to worship and praise God even in the midst of his trouble. See, now look here in verse three. He used a phrase here, blessed be God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this phrase here, blessed be, is a common component of the worship found in the Psalms. It's a way of acknowledging the greatness and worthiness of God. Uh, before Paul even unpacked all the ways that God comforted him, he said in verse three, he praised God for the opportunity to experience grace and peace through the Lord Jesus. I can move on. Um, and we can express praise to God too. And we can know that when we face afflictions, the God of all comfort meets us where we are. And as Paul's going to show us the way he meets and comforts us, it's quite often through his church. And there's a question here at the bottom of the page 141. It says, what are some ways God comforts his people? I'm going to take a stab at that. How does God comfort his people? Um, uh, by giving him love and understanding and knowledge. His presence with us definitely and, gives us comfort. Um, As we just pointed out, uh, he gives to his children the things they need through other people to comfort us and through his presence with us. And also his comfort in here. Peace. He comforts he us peace. by his word. Yeah, by holy peace word. And, uh, yeah. He gives us that peace that surpasses all understanding to comfort us. You know, he gives us his grace to go mm -hmm. through. If we lose a loved one, you know, you can't bear that burden, but God's grace brings that peace. Yeah. That's how he does it. Okay. Not only is God the source of comfort, but in these next verses here we're going to look at, we learn that we are called to be channels of his comfort. Chris, you want to read 2 Corinthians 1 through 4? Uh, 4b through 7 okay that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ and whether we be afflicted 
it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Or whether we, or whether we be, be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. Now notice he said that big word, consolation, four times here in three verses. Consolation is the comfort received by a person after a loss or disappointment. It's a person or thing providing comfort to a person who suffered. You can also, instead of saying the word consolation, you can use the word comfort, sympathy, compassion, relief, help, aid, support, moral support, encouragement, and reassurance. Now we can, we can and we should be thankful for the comfort that God gives uh, through Christ. But the comfort he provides is not just for our benefit. So he wants to extend that same comfort to others through us. Now, of course, class, we know we are not the source of comfort, right? Amen. Amen. We are not that source of comfort in the lives of others, but we are to be a conduit of God's comfort and presence in the lives of others. So basically, we are his representatives. And what he does in our lives should overflow into the lives of those around us. Now, while this truth certainly can apply to all forms of affliction and suffering, here Paul was specifically addressing the suffering related to being a follower of Christ that we know as persecution. See so here, Paul describes this, look at verse 5, as the sufferings of Christ. So when we align ourselves with Jesus, the world's going to treat us like it treated Jesus. If you don't believe that, look in God's word here in John 15, chapter 15, verse 8. Jesus himself said this. He said, if the world hates you, ye know it hated me before it hated you. So it's not you they hate. It's Christ living in you that they hate because they hated Jesus first. Now, most of us here in America, thank God, we're never really experienced persecution. So we don't know what it's like to be beaten or jailed for just because of our faith. And few of us have even suffered physical, economics, or emotional harm just because of our allegiance to Christ. But when such persecution comes in class, it will come. We have this great promise. And that is when we suffer for our faith in Christ or when we, what Paul said here in verse 5, the sufferings of Christ abound in us where we can experience the comfort of Christ. Now, Paul could be a conduit of God's comfort in difficulties because he had received God's comfort in his own tribulations. So Paul had experienced persecution firsthand, and God could use his sufferings as a source to comfort others. Paul did not shy away from troubles. Matter of fact, he endured the trials so that he could share Christ. And because he endured the inflictions, Paul was able to share the gospel in Corinth. So Paul's afflictions was... As he said here in verse 6, for your consolation and salvation. Now, over the past few weeks, we talked to this writer named Chad. Well, Chad's in here today, and so is Candace. And we talked about her again last week as well. I think both of them last week, matter of fact. They're here today. And anyway, Chad, he said that they have a special connection with the people of China. They're the ones that adopted the three sons from that country. You might remember that article we read here a while back. And they were saddened to hear about the increased persecutions that's happening there in China to believers in the churches there. There's people getting arrested, beaten, and even cruel treatments taking place. And even on a recent visit to China, Chad had firsthand, uh, he heard firsthand of some of their stories. Well, he worshiped with them, he prayed over them, and they were so thankful for the encouragement and comfort that Chad gave to them that God will use us as his vessels of comfort. So these guys was comforted to know that Chad was praying for them, um, for China. And the same thing, God will use us as his vessel uh, of comfort. And then Candace, she wrote that she has a friend whose husband died. Now this comes as a shock to them because although this husband had been sick, even the doctors didn't expect he was going to die. Uh, so her friend was devastated and depressed, as you can imagine, even overwhelmed with all the arrangements that she suddenly had to make. But thankfully, her Bible study group stepped in. This, Candace and the rest of the ones in the Bible study group here with a friend, they, they cooked for her. They brought in food. They, they helped do with whatever she needed. 
In other words, they brought her comfort. Then Candace said it happened. Her friend, her friends even saw this lady start to relax a little and then smiles come and even some laughs at the stories that this wife told about her husband. Now this was a wholly different kind of comfort uh, than what the Chinese Christians needed, but it was the comfort that Candace's friend needed. Now, however, we may have experienced the comfort of Christ, however we do it, whether in the midst of pain, suffering, and persecution, even loss, we can be channels of his comfort in the lives of others, like Candace was here with her friend, and as, as Chad is with the, with the people there in China, the churches, other brothers and sisters. In Christ, they're getting persecuted for their faith. Any questions? i just speed it up just a little bit. All right, when well, our next verse is here, we're going to see that the prayer of God's people help those who suffer. Who would like to read and finish up our scripture here? 1, 8 through 11. For we would not, brethren, let me see that again. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble with which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life? But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raises, raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doeth, doeth deliver, and whom we trust that we he will yet deliver us. He also helping others, helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. So Paul here, he pointed to another way that we could be channels of God's comfort to others. Now in describing his own painful experience that he had in Asia, he declared that they had been more uh, than he could have bared and almost even cost it in his life. Now I love Paul's transparency here. He confessed to being, he said, pressed out of measure. Yet Paul knew that he couldn't rely on his own ability to overcome these hardships that he had to trust God. And trust comes when we see God as Paul did. And Paul remembered God's power. He said it here in verse number nine, the power that raiseth the dead. Now that same power was at work in Paul's situation as God had worked in the past. And he would continue to work in the present and also in the future. So the natural byproduct of such faith and trust is hope. And Paul, he had an unshakable, sure confidence here in verse 10. He said that he will yet deliver us. Now, while Paul knew a level of comfort because of his hope and trust in God during trying times, he also knew he was being supported by others through prayer. So here the apostle, he gained comfort uh, from those who were, he said in verse 11, helping together by prayer for us. So knowing that others are standing before the throne of God in prayer for us is both comforting and encouraging, even in the midst of difficult times. I'm going to cut it short here. Um, but just to wrap it up, I will do that. We'll just wrap this up. So stepping into the lives of those who hurt and suffer is a gift to them and a reason to thank God. Uh, verse 11 says, For the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given to many on our behalf. So even when we pray for those who we don't personally know, like the persecuted believers there in other parts of the world, like Chad did, well, we're making a difference. But it's not about people seeing Here's the key. It's not about the people seeing that we're making a difference. Here's what it is. It's all about bringing thanks, praise, and glory to the one who makes all the difference, right? Oh, yes. Blessed be God for the comfort and encouragement that he brings to us. Amen. Any questions Amen. there? Anything to point out before we have to leave? I've got to ask you in case I need one. Are you okay? All right. Barbara? Would you close us in prayer, please, today? To Heavenly Father, thank you for this, Lord. Thank, thank you for this day. Thank you for the message that you brought to us this morning. Please, Lord, be with Tommy as he brings the message today, Lord. And please, Lord, if someone doesn't know you today, let them come to know you. Thank you for your many wonderful blessings, and thank you for our, our church family. Please, Lord, be with Josh and Jackie as they at Victory uh, Baptist Church this morning. And if there's not someone there that doesn't know you, let them come to know you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Forgive us for all of our sins and our trespasses. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 That was an interesting study there. I enjoyed that. Uh, and I hope you did too. 
And we see that the only source of comfort we have is through God, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit indwelling within us. He's the only source of comfort there is, knowing that our Heavenly Father loves us and cares for us, and that he goes through our pains and sufferings right alongside with us. <clears throat> now, Grace Church, our Sunday morning worship services, they are posted on Facebook Live. And it's under, written together, is Jerry and Barbara, and in the space, McKelvey. It's through our Facebook page. And we are getting our new camera recording systems all set up and going, but for now, we're sorry for any inconvenience or confusion. Grace Church has a Facebook page, and there's some information there about our church on that page. We're diligently working on getting our social media system up and working properly. We just want to thank you for your patience. And also, if you do not have a church home, or maybe you're currently in between churches, well, I'd like to personally invite you to come and worship with us. We're Grace Church, and we're located at 821 Whitlock Street in Spartanburg, South Carolina. The zip code there is 29301. Our service times, we have Sunday school. It begins at 930 on Sunday morning. Then the Sunday worship service begins at 1030. Then on Wednesday evening, we have a service there, and that starts at 6 p.m. And we have an awesome pastor there. His name is uh, Thomas Bryant. Now, he brings the word of God to you. He cares about his flock. Uh, he loves the church. And just an awesome pastor. And just want to encourage you to come and worship with us. Hey, everyone, thanks for watching. And we'll see you on our next adventure together. God bless you and have a safe day. Thank you.